This story originates in the late 13th century, written by the Archbishop of Genoa, Jacobus de Varine, in his book Legenda Aria, which translates to Golden Legend. First published in Latin in 1470, it was translated into Bohemian, French, German, and Italian. In 1483, the Earl of Arundel commissioned it to be printed in English. Uh, my name is Professor Lungstirup, and I am a professor at Hartford uh, with a D, uh, community college. Uh, at night, I teach night, uh, every other week. The hero of our story is, his life is just surrounded in mystery and in legend. Uh, but historically, uh, he's a real person. In, in history. So in De Voragine's version of St. George and the Dragon, the dragon has been spreading the plague to the townspeople of Celine. I got a new drink from my own personal stash. I think you guys are gonna love it. Does that say plague? No, no, it's plague. There's a little hat on the E. Come on, drink up, drink up. Is this the same thing Timmy has? Yes, yes, yes. Timmy has the exact same thing. And his father, and his mother. Hey, hey. Drink up, drink up. All right. Yeah. It's gonna hit you the hardest. Soon the, the sheep actually aren't enough. I can't eat lamb chops every day. <laughs> <laughs> and the dragon gets really upset and decides he's gonna go ahead and spread the plague again. I'm glad you came back for seconds. I got a brand new drink called Pladewi. 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 Yeah. This is the same thing. This is the plague. No, it's, I'm not giving you the plague. Do you ever think maybe the rats carried it in? The rats? The rats can't carry it. They don't even have any hands. You are so dumb. The people decide that they're going to feed the dragon children and virgins, and they come up with a lottery to choose who they're going to feed to the dragon. And unfortunately, this is when it winds up landing on the princess, Sabra, who is the king's daughter. I won! I won, I won, I won, I won! <laughs> so Sabra was placed in the sacrificial spot in the lake, and then that's when our hero, St. George, comes rushing in to save her. Sabra, you're still here. I thought the dragon would have eaten you by now. What is it about a dragon not being on time for his own dinner? Listen, I don't have to answer to anyone, okay? I was coming down to eat her right now. Sabra, it's the dragon! Stand back! Oh, you're Sabra? Yeah. Sabra? Yeah. You look it. Thanks. I don't get it. It's okay. In De Voragini's account, St. George actually takes Sabra's girdle and places it around the dragon's neck and then they bring the dragon back to town. Sabra, I will now don the red cross! And I will smite the dragon for thee! I'm not scared. There we go. You will be! Just, just come on this way. What are you doing? No, but I... I was going to don the red cross! I made it myself! Once the girdle was around the dragon's neck, they led the dragon back to town, where St. George tells the town folk that he will only slay the dragon if they convert to Christianity. They agreed. George slayed the dragon, and 15,000 people were baptized that day. Many versions of this story have been told, and it's even been made into children's books. Another interesting version was written by Richard Johnson in his book, The History of the Seven Champions of Christendom. The furious dragon so fiercely hit him with his venomous tail, the downfall man and horse, in which two of St. George's ribs were sorely bruised. But yet, stepping backward, it was his chance to leap under an orange tree. Why did you send Sabra away? She was the first one that was of age. Who do you think I am? Jared from Subway? Thought you wanted children. Well, yeah, every once in a while, but not every time. It doesn't matter now, dragon. Now is the time for you to die. Well, you can't. Ah! Ah! Nope, doesn't work. Ah! Nothing. It's not possible. Ah! Dude. Ah! 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 I didn't even have to move. That was easy. I 
didn't think it was possible. He tumbled under the branches of the orange tree, in which place the dragon could proffer him no farther violence, the fruit of the tree being of such excellent virtue that whosoever tasted thereof should presently be cured of all manner of diseases and infirmities whatsoever. Why are you under an orange tree? Of this? No, I can't. I'm allergic to oranges. Well, I mean, how allergic are you? How bad is it? Break out in hives and stuff. I turn all like human color. It just doesn't look pretty. Oh, well, fine. That does not sound good. Well, like, I was winning the fight. This isn't fair. You can't use magic. I wouldn't say you were winning. No, you just come out from under there, please. No, those odd scales that were protecting you, by the way, that's just Batman. Nerd. So, it was the noble champion's good and happy fortune, a little to recover through the virtue of the tree, and especially an orange which had a little beforehand, had dropped down, wherewith he so refreshed himself that he was in short time as sound as when he began the encounter. Then kneeled he down, and made his divine supplication to heaven, that God would send him, for his dear son's sake, such strength and agility of body as to stay the furious and terrible monster, which being done with a bold courage courageous heart, he smote the dragon under the wing, where it was tender without scale, whereby his good sword Ascalon. Stop it! No, you stop, stop it! it. <laughs> I told you to go away! Leave that plague out of here! Take it away! I will kill it. What is that? Defense Mechanism 4. Did you take a class? Yeah. Okay. Huh. Ow! Man! Ugh. Eddie, you can't do that! Scales, bro. Ah! How's that for scales? How'd you do that? Well, I, I thought we were just playing around. No, I thought this was, I was for Sabra. I didn't. I don't have scales there, man. I, I didn't. I'll, I'll go get help. I'll go get help. <laughs> <laughs> the story had a huge cultural significance. During the Protestant Reformation, it actually became an allegory for the triumph of Protestantism over the Roman Catholic Church. St. George represents the quality and characteristics that every Christian would aspire to. Sit right here, and you're going to ask me, <laughs> What is this sorcery? Are you trying to capture my soul? My name is St. George. St. George had tremendous faith. He believed that he was going to be able to defeat the dragon in the name of Jesus. St. George also had perseverance in his battle with the dragon. He decided to keep his eyes on God and persevere through that battle. I defeated the dragon. I challenged him in a duel. And I won. Another great Christian characteristic or quality. After the battle, the king decides to give a reward to St. George. And St. George then takes that reward, that gold and silver that he just got from saving Sabra. And he then gave it away to the poor. He's a better man than me because I probably would have gambled it away. The dragon represents evil, and he represents Satan. Uh, my name's Dragon. Uh, first and last name, Dragon. Uh, well, to be honest, my real name's Scott. So the dragon actually came, and he wanted to consume the virgin who could be representative of the people. The only way to defend that virgin was through a pious, righteous, religious man, St. George, who held these Christian values and beliefs and characteristics. The symbol of, of the devil? I mean, he did this just convert people to Christianity. He tried to blame a plague on us? Like, that was obviously the rats. I would say that it's an updated version for the time of the story of David and Goliath, which comes out of the Bible. So much in the same way, St. George actually battled the dragon in the name of Jesus and used that to convert those 15,000 people and help them establish their faith in God and Christianity. Go back to the castle. I will fight him! Hey, do we, we swipe right on Tinder, man. Come on, like, let, let me have this. What? Dude! It looks like nine got swiped left it! <laughs> Come on, drink up, drink up. Okay. 
You're gonna love it the most. You're really gonna feel it. <laughs> Uh, my students really love my hair. They they say I look like one of the twins on The Matrix. Oh, don't be a baby. <coughs> if you can't handle your liquor, you can't come over here anymore. <coughs> it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you guys aren't going to pass the class anyway. Kate Morgan might pass. But other than that, start finding some, some low-level college, not required jobs. Uh, maybe... Uh, assistant manager at a Red Robin. Whatever degree you're trying to get now, it's not worth it. Uh, unless you're getting a theater degree, which turned out all right for me.